Dartmouth. I'm shaking my head. Shenanigans. And communism. <laughs> the far left female run outlet The Skim reports today on Dartmouth College. Yesterday, I call it Dartmouth, but I think it's pronounced Dartmouth. Uh, the so called Ivy League University said that they will go back to requiring applicants submit standardized tests scores, such as SAT scores, I guess. SAT, you go in high school, you, in junior year or senior year, you go and take your SAT test and see how competent you are in writing and math and uh, maybe history or something. I forget what. I took it. I took it, but I wasn't really planning on going to any particular college. I did all right. Uh, Dartmouth made them optional back in 2020, and this was um, along with Harvard and Yale during the China virus scamdemic. What is that? The that people didn't have access, communist buzzword, to getting the test because it was the China virus scamdemic. Four Dartmouth professors have found that test scores served as a better predictor of how well students would do at the school rather than high school grades due to grade inflation. Teachers give you an A or they give you a C or a B when you don't really deserve it. Student essays, students writing these essays or other people writing essays for them, or maybe you just don't want to read all that mess. Or teacher recs, teacher recommendations. Teachers will recommend a ham sandwich. <laughs> Uh, a bump on a log if they like you. They also found that dropping the requirement ended up hurting so-called lower-income applicants. Huh. Imagine that. There's a lot of hard-working uh, whites and Asians and even Hispanics who uh, don't have all that money. Or even maybe even some blacks. The news ties into a years-long debate about around the value and drawbacks of schools' admissions practices from standardized tests. Ooh, the SAT values whites, favors whites, they claim. Affirmative action, which is evil, kissing up to, uh, to them based on their race, give, giving them special treatment, special favor. And uh, legacy admissions, legacy admissions. Oh, the, your parents went there, so you get to go there. It's a little bit... Maybe you'll be qualified and they just give you a little bit of, you get a leg in the door, legacy admissions. Or your parents went there and they donated, so uh, you get to special treatment. Oh, and speaking of Dartmouth, says this, the ladies at the skim, I think based American historian, by way of India, I think, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, I think he went to Dartmouth. Dartmouth. Uh, but anyway, uh, yesterday a federal official said Dartmouth College's men's basketball players are allowed to unionize. What? Potentially clearing the path for the first labor union, so-called, in college athletics. What? What sense does that make? <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. It's not kissing up. It's worship at this point, says Mike Gibson. Yeah, true. It's ridiculous. That is shameful. They're worshiping based on shallow things. Oh, since you're black and I'm white, I can't judge with blacks. You're a fellow human being. <laughs> and you can you have a, the freedom of speech to tell the truth. How are <laughs> Does D Dartmouth have a good basketball team? Are they no? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Um, sort of interesting. Sort of communist, though. I think that we should perhaps abolish unions, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The people are so corrupt. They get these, oh, we need our union break. Oh, we need our union wages. And it's so artificial, and it drives... Well, not in the case of college basketball necessarily, but it drives production outside of the country along with the uh, minimum wage and all these ridiculous things. 
it's terrible, I think, my personal opinion. These unions, they support demon rats. Uh, unions are typically made of the, or founded by, or uh, the joiners are often the ingrates. The ingrates. I had a friend who worked over at like a, a government job, basically. County job, you know. And they wanted to unionize some of the more ingrate people, and it was just a problem. People not getting along. People being, uh, wanting not to work. Wanting not to work. <laughs> a whole lot of this stuff is about not wanting to work. Mike Gibson says, I deal with union workers at my job. They will literally, dr they will literally drop what they are doing once break time comes around. Not just to uh, finish what they're doing and then take a break at a, at a sensible breaking point. They'll just, up oh, 9.15, got it. Up. No accountability with union workers. They can get away with murder, says Mike Gibson. Scabs, asks Steve C. Scabs? Scabs is when you don't. Uh, you don't join with the union, you don't, you don't participate in their dumb strike where they're not working. They're standing off the job and protesting and picketing and mess. Not quite how it works, but go off, says I see. <laughs> I don't know if that's a reference to what I was talking about where unions uh, drove away the jobs overseas and uh, NAFTA was also not a good situation. We need what Trump was bringing back, which was manufacturing. The, I made the mistake of joining a union, said Bobby Blanco. Never again. A disincentive to do work, says, come on, man. It's not going in a good direction. I think that I used to hear that Starbucks was a great place to work, for example. And, uh, like 20, 25 years ago, maybe more. And they had, you know, benefits and all that stuff, and it was not union. And now they want to unionize. And Star Starbucks does support liberal th policies, so they kind of supported the self-destruction of the communities around them. They support the LGBT thing, so-called same-sex marriage, before it was, uh, forced on everybody. Uh... All that stuff, anti-racism, Black Lives Matter, mess. And so they supported the destruction, the crime, to come and mess up their areas. And there have been people who, like, tried to keep their stores a nice place to be. Because their stores are places where people hang out and do work or whatever, or meet, do little meetings. But there was a lot of riffraff coming in and making mess, doing drugs, asking for money, uh, loitering, not in a good way. And they would sometimes ask these people to leave, especially if they didn't buy anything. You're not supposed to have, in Starbucks, you don't have to buy anything and they can, you can just stay. Wow. But sometimes at their discretion, the manager can ask you to leave. And sometimes blacks were asked to leave and the manager was dismissed r over that. And I think the cops literally had to come and arrest some people who refused to leave. Ridiculous. Come on, blacks. What a mess. But now Starbucks is trying to unionize, so it's be gonna become inferior. Unions are good if a skilled trade for the training and education, says Bill West. Other than that, it is unnecessary. I've heard there's some solid guys who work unions. But they're my opinion, overpaid, pardon me for saying it, overpaid, getting 30, 40, 50 bucks an hour. <laughs> and it's kind of artificial, you know? And then they have all this, uh, they support Democrats, it's just communism, corruption. And I get that the commie capitalist corporations are corrupt too. But you don't solve it with more corruption from the other side. Unions have their places, Gypsy Jeb Jab. You may be right, I don't know, but it's... It may be a much, 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 much more diminished place. Same with all this commie capitalism mess. 
I support unions generally, says Terry. You're a woman, you would. <laughs> no, just not to dox her. Maybe it's a man named T Terry. Terrible, huh? 